What is good? We're back and we're ready to roll. <laughs> Simultaneous crack. All right. I don't even know if you can hear it within levels. We got our guy Austin Abbott. How you doing, bud? Good, man. What's going on? How you guys doing? Oh, just maxing and relaxing. Shooting some b-ball outside of this pool. What are we doing here, Fresh Prince? We are going to do an oldie but a goodie. Something we've done a lot of. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to go back to the well a little mm-hmm. early this time. We'll do this a few times, but we're going to do 23 picks versus 24 picks. Which we've never done that. We've done like 22 versus 23. Right. And 21 versus 22. So we're going to go into the future. Yeah. And we're going to start talking. We're, we're going to start talking about some of the high picks from this year and some of the high picks coming in from next year. We're going to put them up against each other in a cage match to the death. Some people be all about that historical data. We're over here in the future. Mm hmm. Austin, uh, where can we find you on the Twitter before we get rolling? Let's get a quick plug in. At Austin Abbott FF on Twitter. Make sure you go follow him. Any any social media platform, I believe that's your same same handle. So yeah, yeah, appreciate it, fellas. Go follow your boy. I think right off the rip, you gotta go. You gotta go, Marvin Harrison versus Bijan, right? I mean, that's that's got to be the the first cage match, right? I mean. <laughs> I think I think everybody's answer is probably going to be the same, but I'll I'll throw it to you, Austin. What 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 say you here in Marvin Harrison versus Bijan Robinson? All right, dude, you're putting the pressure on me right out of the gate. Uh, now I'm going to feel like a fool if we're not on the same side. But uh, first thing that comes to mind is just think of the shelf life of the two positions, right? You hope you get four to five good years out of Bijan Robinson, and uh, I love Bijan as much as anybody else. I drafted him with my. Uh, 101 this past year you know he's been disappointing and i don't really care at all right it doesn't bother me it's just we know that arthur smith one day if there is a god will be out of town and uh <laughs> um you know Bijan's best days are ahead of us and he's gonna have a hell of a career um i'm pulling trigger on marvin harrison jr here yeah i i think that's gonna be most everybody's uh sentiments please go piss them all off case <laughs> well you know I, and understandable and I, and I think that's it's it's i guess the right choice because i think i think shelf life can play into it and you know i can be on my team for 10 years and listen the average dynasty i think only lasts three years so <laughs> i don't know really what everyone everyone's trading these 26 picks i'm like is your league even gonna be there yeah I mean, there there is certainly, uh, you know, I get it. Marvin Harrison looks awesome, should be awesome. He's going to immediately come in and probably step into a, a damn near top five wide receiver ranking. I would think almost immediately before more than even, that, probably before he even plays a game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a that's a pretty safe bet. Bijan, however, came right in and was basically the RB one. Um, and the first couple games of the season, you saw exactly you got exactly what you paid for. And then this last game, you 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 saw. You know him, volume, at, him at least get the volume back. Arthur Smith was like, "Fine, you know, I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll do what you fantasy." And we still didn't win, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's just like there isn't a person I've ever rooted for him against. I've defended Arthur Smith last year, being like, "Hey, he kept these games close," and now I'm like, "Dude, you got you got three top ten picks on your offense, and you ain't using any one of them like you should." Uh, so see ya. There's not, I've been I was rooting like hell for the Cardinals uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and then it will be that way. Everybody else should be rooting against yeah. the, Fal- the Falcons. Even if you're a Falcons fan, pull Root. against the Falcons from here on out. Yeah. Let's get this guy the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll be so sad when he's out, out jobless and is still a billionaire. They find the, oh yeah, <laughs> they find the worst pictures of him too. I love but, it. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to take Bijan on this side. Just, just to you know, throw the other side in here. I just feel like, there's such a gap between the top running backs and, and the rest of the running backs. Bijan, I know, can give me the 20, 20 to 25-point ceiling week in, week out. He's probably the closest thing to CMC out there right now, and we see what CMC is doing, and we see, see what CMC has done. Bijan, an outstanding receiver, uh, outsta- like just looks different on the field when just I can't even imagine how you're not giving him 20 to 25 reps every single game. It makes no sense. And hopefully, like you said, if there if there is a Lord and Savior above, that Arthur Smith will be, you know, nixed after this year. Even if there's not. And we can get back to uh to to normal Bijan usage. 
Uh, so I, I'll, I'm going to take Bijan here. I just feel like there is, I get the advantage long term of the wide receiver and how good Marvin and Harrison could be. I've already seen Bijan be good, and I don't want that to be the default answer for everything, but I, I, I've seen him on the NFL field be able to be good. And I think that we can, I, I, the, I think there is a positional advantage to the dominant running back. Um, in the long term. Yeah, I mean, I was looking, I was just going through game logs and looking at where certain running backs had finished, and Sleeper gives you kind of what their finish overall was for, like, each game. And, I mean, if you're averaging, like, 10 points, you're a top 20 RB. If you're av- if you're getting, like, 12 points, you're, like, a top 12 RB. So, but then CMC's up there at, like, 30. So, like, if you can have the top echelon running back, that's going to, that's how you win. That's how you win games. Now, the shelf life is shorter, so they're not hot. People don't don't like them. Like I've seen people that said that I traded Bijan because I don't want to build around a running back. It's like, man, who wants who, who wants to take this long to rebuild? You don't even know if your team's gonna be here th- yeah. then anyway. You need to like, and, and you're probably not as far away from a, a complete rebuild as you well, think you are. Like you start trading away all your good players, then yeah, sure you are. Right, you just did right. that to yourself. You don't necessarily have to do that. And and you don't want the rebuild. You don't want the running back in a rebuild if, if it's going to be you know more than just a little quick tear down so but, i mean understood shit, but Bijan hasn't been getting used this year it was actually like the perfect rebuild move because like he wasn't he's not hasn't sure. been helping you win up to this point like and if, and if you don't have enough i get it under the assumption that maybe you, you need more assets because you don't have enough and you have to sell the running back got it and you don't want it's a short shelf life and anything can happen understood about why you don't want the running back but I want the really, really good running back. That's that's the top three or four of them in the league, and I think Bijan is that. I think we just need to have a little patience. We've seen it. I know Marvin Harrison could. He's not the wrong answer gonna here. Be, no, I, it's that's probably the, the right answer, answer right. Uh, but I'm, I'm going Bijan here. So uh, anything else before we move on to the next one, Austin? No, man. I mean, you guys, what, everything you said was factual, right? We were talking about two players that are just top tier for, you know, they're, they're the future of the NFL. They're going to be the face of the NFL. I mean, Bijan's already the face of the NFL. Bijan is must watch television, right? That's yeah. how I view him already. So I don't have a problem with anything you guys said. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. We'll, we'll go to a little more super flex uh, like because we know we know we like the super flex around here. Uh, let's go CJ Stroud, who is the hottest thing right now and let's go Caleb maybe a little too good for too long um and and people are starting to doubt Caleb and and find reasons nitpicking why Caleb you know isn't you know the second coming uh so uh I'll I'll throw it to you on this one CJ Stroud or Caleb I'm taking CJ Stroud all right I got a lot I got a lot to say about CJ Stroud he is a prospect I loved coming out of Ohio State um all right, let me just. I got. I got a lot. I gotta Go ahead. get off my chest Unpack right here. It, um, <laughs> I legitimately think Stroud is a top five MVP candidate. It drives me crazy. I was checking out DraftKings today. His odds are plus twenty five hundred. Patrick Mahomes is plus three hundred. Okay, so hear me out. Mahomes is seventeen total touchdowns, eight picks, two hundred and seventy one passing yards per game. Stroud has seventeen touchdowns, total touchdowns, the same number, two interceptions. 292 passing yards, right? And Mahomes is plus 300 for MVP. Yeah, that's Stroud that's is just plus 2,500. Right it is exactly it. That was the next sentence that, that was going to come out of my mouth. Just yeah, let me know what I'm missing here. Um, I don't know, man. I, I might hop off the podcast real quick. I'm going to go empty my bank account right now on uh, CJ Stroud to win MVP. Because nice. the odds are just phenomenal. And um, it, I, I don't know if it's because he's a rookie or just rain, name recognition, but I think that it's ridiculous, the, the odds. Um, so give me Stroud here. Uh, no disrespect to Caleb. I understand his upside is, is you know, looks pretty damn good. Um, I get he's had a little bit of a down year recently. Um, I understand everything going on with Caleb right now. Caleb's going to be fine. He's going he's gonna to probably be – I think he's going to be a superstar. I feel pretty good about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I love what I see out of Stroud, man. Why would you Why would you trade CJ Stroud right now? Yeah, you know I I don't know. Um, my next question was going to be if it went the other way. Well, would you rather what would you do for Al or uh, AR fifteen here? But we'll we'll take that as a separate question. Look, if, um, if the Anthony Texans Richardson. so so Caleb's going to be the one one next year, mm-hmm. like right? It's right. still the same. The, yeah, the Texans wouldn't trade stroud for caleb right like you know what i mean 
Yeah, I mean, a bird in the hand is worth like two bushes. So <laughs> you you got to take the guy you just seen slaying everyone re- of recent on the NFL field. Look what he just did to the Bengals. Right, and I, and I don't want that to be the answer for everything. And I, you know, I kind of lean Stroud a little bit, uh, but. If these dudes weren't so good, Caleb, uh, yeah, I want to, you know, Caleb looks like he could be all world and give us the next iteration of the guy who like Stroud with is, the legs. is fighting, uh, you know, for the MVP, Patrick Mahomes. He, he looks like he's got a lot of Mahomes stuff to him. Uh, and I know a lot of people would just pretty much all just default to the 24s because it, they, they'd rather have the unknown of what could be. Right. And I'm like, well, sh- I'll, I'll take what I know. Uh, at least on the higher end stuff. And, and that um, might not be the wrong move either because of how valuable people value these picks. You right. know what I mean? Like value wise, you know, I don't know what the keep trade cut says because I don't care. Oh, but like that's a homeless shelter. I'm sure it's got the one one up there. Right. Super far. I'll 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 go opposite here. I'll take Caleb just because like you said, I I think CJ has the legs. You saw it on a short glimpse here in this last game when he needed it. He hasn't shown an awful lot. He can do it. I think Caleb will be doing a little bit more of that now. The situation that Caleb goes into might be a little bit more less advantageous than what is going on in Houston right now. But, I mean, the situation that CJ Stroud was going into was nothing that anybody thought was going to be good. And CJ, you know, has proved that with the uh, – what's the Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky uh, Brooks uh, – trucks and trailers and and the idea is that, that the truck can pull the trailer and elevates everything in the trailer you know there's quarterbacks that are truck that are trailers and there's quarterbacks that are that are trucks obviously cj stroud is elevating everything around him so it's hard to you know he's a semi truck it's hard to be- say that you would take the unknown there but I'm, I'm going with the wildly ridiculous unknown uh with with caleb there something strange i don't even i don't even know about yeah let's do uh drake may versus anthony richardson I'd prefer Anthony Richardson here. Uh, I'm a big fan of Drake May. Just just want to get that out there. I'm a big fan. Um, But I I do have a a few things I would like to say about Anthony Richardson. So he finished finished his first game. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, (laughs) But the furthest thing from Homer, if anything, I'm kind of the opposite. uh, I'm a little bit too hard on him. Um, But A. Rich finished his first game in his NFL career as QB4 for fantasy purposes. Um, And he didn't even finish the game. Like he got knocked out. Um, Something that he's really got to focus on is just taking care of himself man yeah. um like like he could have finished as a qb1 overall if he finishes that final drive um and then two weeks later a rich finishes as the qb2 33.6 fantasy points mm-hmm. um sure the, the nfl sample size and production is small here are some other factors that, that i want you guys to keep in mind about anthony richardson if you have him in dynasty so the colts have the fourth best off- offensive line thanks to uh shout out pff Mm-hmm. Uh, Bernard, uh, Bernard, uh, Raymond, uh, you know, big Q, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Will Fry, their offensive line this season is spectacular. Normally there's like one squeaky wheel. There's one offensive lineman that's kind of lacking in the department of, of just blocking dude. They don't have it this year. They are dominant. Why do you think Zach Moss is balling out, right? It's not just Jonathan Taylor. Uh, that offensive line is the truth. Like the center, Ryan Kelly, he's allowed pressure on 1.1% of his pa- of pass plays this season. That's the lowest rate amongst all offensive linemen. Um, just, just their whole offensive line is balling out. Jonathan Taylor signed a three-year, $42 million deal. So what does that tell you? He is locked up for the rest of Anthony Richardson's rookie campaign. Uh, I love that as an A-rich owner. And then think about Michael Pittman Jr., man. He's up for a new contract extension. You better believe mm-hmm. Chris Ballard's going to give him the bag. I mean, we're looking at like a three-year, maybe four-year. Dude, I bet you close to $100 million for Michael Pittman. Think back. Christian Kirk just got $84 million, uh, about a year and a half ago, man. So like all of this is... is uh, rational all of this is is very realistic and i just think that anthony richardson's supporting cast in in, in, the, in indianapolis is all of a sudden uh pretty ideal sure would, would you would you guys agree yeah man i think the supporting cast is great i, I think you gotta pay uh michael Pittman. you know you, you gotta give your quarterback that number one outlet josh downs i think is ahead of schedule he looks great if you could get a tight end, I think Granson can be okay. We'll see what Jelani looks like when he comes back. That would be awesome. The offensive line is awesome, like you've stated. You got JT now signed to to a long term deal, so I think everything looking up uh, for the Colts. So 
I would also take Anthony Richardson in this situation. I mean, you just you see how fast those points can pile up uh, in that Houston game. Uh, uh, that 17 points, I think, was in a quarter. Uh, yeah. You know, and then, uh, you know, comes back in the Rams game and had a huge comeback. Uh, he, he just he showed you that he was less of a project than than I think a lot of people anticipated with, with the legs it really elevates the floor in, in dynasty and or in fantasy rather. And, you know, you're seeing all those difference making quarterbacks right now are, are the, the top three or four that are averaging the 24, 25 points are all guys who can, you know, do a little something extra with their legs, if not a lot more with their legs. You know, that that would be maybe the one thing that keeps Stroud and Burrow from being perennial powerhouses is you don't see as much legs as you see from the other guys. But, you know, you've been seeing a little bit more from Burrow. You maybe, you know, I think Herbert needs to get back to it. I think it's elevated Dak back to, you know, potentially a, a little bit higher end quarterback of what we've been seeing him from. That's why we liked him in the first place. So when those legs get involved and Anthony Richardson's is, is just insane. And you're right. He does need to learn how to take a little bit better care of himself here. And I think that's something that they'll that they'll work on. But you can't take it all away. It's much like Josh Allen here. You got to pick and choose your spots. Uh, sometimes you just need to slide and go down. But I, I think I think Anthony Richardson will figure it out. He's a smart kid. Uh, he knows that he needs to be your most, you know, your best ability is availability. So he needs to be available and continue to grow. So I'll, I would take Anthony Richardson uh, in that situation as well. Yeah, that's, that's too easy. You ready to keep it moving? Yeah, man. And I guess a uh, final thing I'll say, yeah. I look at a lot of mock drafts. Imagine if they pulled trigger on like Malik Neighbors or Brock Bowers. I think Brock Bowers makes a lot of sense because they truly don't have that yeah. solid tight end. So ridiculous. Supporting, the supporting cast could get even better. Yeah. You know, no, but, they, should, uh, they, should, they should amp it up one more, you know, yeah. ridiculous skill player. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go um, Neighbors versus Gibbs here. <sighs> God, you got to go first here, man. This is too hard. Give me like 30 seconds. To- All right. Um, <laughs> so neighbors coming in from LSU, six foot, 200. Uh, he's number one in the uh, NCAA in yards right now, 1,238. He's PFF's number one graded wide receiver at 93.2. Fourth in targets, 106. Sixth in reception, 72. Tied for fifth in TDs with 10. Second in routes, targets per route run. Ninth in yards per reception was 17.8. The A dots 16.4. Whoo! Missed tackles force 24. He's tied for third. So really doing his thing out there, balling out for LSU. Um, Everyone, just for the record, was not happy that that, that we did not have neighbors as the wide we, receiver we had, two. We had neighbors as the wide receiver two in the last mock we did. It so, doesn't count. You know, switch it up matter. a little doesn't bit. Doesn't matter. Recency um, is all that matters. You know, and I I like neighbors. I'm going Gibbs here. Um, I'll take Gibbs. He's been the RB2 uh, since week seven, week seven through 10. There's a bye week in there, but 27, 29, 26 uh, fantasy points in the NFL. Um, That'll boost your stock right back up. Doing, doing, uh, looking really good out there, starting to get more comfortable. Um, you know, I think there'll be a little bit of up and down with Gibbs. Uh, but you just, again, I, I just. I want that difference making running back. And I think Gibbs is well on his way to being a difference making running back. Um, not that I'm, I'm out on the wide receivers by any means. I'm, I'm all in on, you know, th- there's only going to be a few running backs that I want on my team and that I want to draft high up. And, and, you know, we just happen to touch on two of them and they're, and they're younger guys with their careers just starting. Um, so I'm going to take uh, Gibbs here. What do you, what do you say, uh, Austin? Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to all the YouTube comments. I saw that they were pumped to, or, or they were arguing with you guys. They have neighbors as their wide receiver too. And I'll, I'm with everybody, man. He is my wide receiver too. He's someone I've planted my flag on. I love, yeah. I love Malik neighbors. I'm a big fan. The more I think about it though, man, I, I gotta go. I have to go Jameer Gibbs here. You know? you, 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 I feel like the position, dude, Two you bushes. nailed it. Like, like I don't want to sit here and re- reiterate everything you just said because you were spot on. Uh, Jameer Gibbs is just – he's been everything that we've wanted so far. I know that they had a relatively slow start for him, but he looks he looks everything that we ever wanted out of Jameer Gibbs. We are seeing it right now. We're in week 10, and it just wheels up for really the rest of his <laughs> – for the rest of his career, dude. I, yeah. I love Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, we we and we saw some you know goal line carries in this past week. I think it – really helped him to establish himself uh, with Monty being out a little bit there. And then, you know, Monty's still great. 
uh, and he's still going to be, there's still going to be some ebbing and flowing uh, with, with how that goes, but that's just fantasy in general. I mean, wide receivers do the same thing, um, especially if there's anybody on the other side with him, and we have no idea where Neighbors is going to uh, end up, but, you know, n- no slight on Neighbors. I'm, I'm not sure if he's locked in as my two, uh, but, you know, as we're going to do this multiple times, we're having some fun here. Um, I haven't, I haven't locked in on everything I feel about these, these college prospects. We're on them a little earlier than usual. Um, and having some fun here, but I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with my guy Gibbs here. These 24 rookies you need to draft today before <laughs> right? it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> Shout um, out to Corey Maine. Let's, uh, let's kick it to the next one. You ready to go? Yep. Yep. All let's right. do it. Let's go Rome Adunze and verse Achan, A-Chain. A-chan. A-chan. Son of a bitch. Ooh. This is a good question. Uh, wow. I look at Rome as maybe my receiver three or four in between there. Uh, I like I, maybe maybe receiver four, probably four. Um, and I look at A-chan as a fringe top 10 dynasty running back. You guys know I care about measurables. You guys know I care about size and the fact that he's gotten hurt twice already uh, low volume, just hyper efficient, unreal speed, uh, knockoff version of CJ 2K, Walmart version. Maybe he's better than CJ 2K. I'm joking. He's not going to be better than CJ 2K. But <laughs> um, God, all things considered, man. Oh my God, I actually think I, I think I'd rather roam. I really do. Mm. I, I, I feel safer about Rome, and I think that's what it comes down to. When we look back three, four, five years from now. I think Rome is going to be the right choice. I think he's going to be a player who, like you mentioned, availability is the best ability. I think he's going to offer that much more. And um, I don't doubt his talent for a second. How yeah, do you? I kind of put these two against each other because I, I kind of see them. I don't want to say the same at different positions, but um, Rome's just that big play, efficient, gets the ball down the field. He also is a really good punt returner and can move really well for being mm-hmm. 6'3", 215. Uh, but in the offense that he's in, in in Washington with the quarterback that he has, they get the ball down the field and they strike quickly. A lot of big plays from Rome. He's their go-to guy. A chain kind of similar, uh, where you know he he's he's he smashed those big plays uh, right off the rip with the Dolphins and was efficient with his touches. So kind of pit those two guys against each other. Um, it feels like you know I'm gonna I want to go uh, Devon here, but I'm 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 stick with my guy Rome. I I like Rome a, a ton. He, he's probably my wide receiver three, uh, but he he may feel like he's going to be a little bit more quarterback and system dependent. But I, I don't think uh, Devon's really, you know, obviously he landed in this in the best possible situation, I think, possible where speed has, you know, everybody's a speed merchant over there and speed kills. Um, but I, I'm going to go I'm going to go Rome on this one. That was a good question, man. That was uh, threw me for a loop, man. It's it's just interesting when you think about the size difference between the two players yeah. and like you know the unknown. Like we don't know where Rome is going to land. Achan landed in probably a ten out of ten spot for him, right? For for his uh, skill set sure. with McDaniel. So yeah, I like that question. It just uh, you got me stumped for a second. I had to, I had to think about that. Yeah, one. yeah. Ro- Rome's fourth tied for fourth and a dot sixteen point four third and yards per reception eighteen point six. So, you know, ninth, nine TDs, so that's tied for 10th. You know, just just a big play guy and, and you know, decent amount, not not even, not not anywhere near the targets of some of the top guys or, or receptions of some of the top guys, rather, but still 1,100 yards to thir- third overall. Um, just, you know, just a, a really explosive, fun player. Coming into this, I was taking A-chain, but I, I, I swayed at the last second there and, mm-hmm. and went Rome. All right, let's go to let's go to a tight end, and then we got one more after this. We'll go Brock Bowers versus Kincaid. The, one, the number one tight end this year versus the number one tight end uh, in the incoming class here. What do you think? I'm going to take Brock Bowers here. Mm-hmm. I really, really like what I see from Brock Bowers, man. The fact that he's basically a running back. No, I'm joking, of course, but like <laughs> he can just, he can do it all, dude. Yeah. Brock Bowers is a specimen. When you think of just, you know, the first guy that comes to mind when I think about Brock Bowers, Brock Bowers is Kyle Pitts, right? Of course, we're just, we're going to compare sure. the most recent. Um, you got to compare unicorns to unicorns. Yeah, no one yeah, yeah. like that. <laughs> Kyle Pitts right. sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, it's making my, you know, it's not benefiting my argument. It's making me look silly here. But I believe nice. that Brock Bowers is going to go on to have a very good career. And I, and I still love Ooh, Kyle, Kyle Pitts, Pitts man. Like, like, to like, have a really good career, too. 
I'm, I'm still in on Kyle Pitts, yeah, right? I've, I by no means. I'm probably the leader of the Kyle Pitts, fan, you know, fan club. You're still, standing I here think. with two cheerleaders of Kyle Pitts yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, that's cool. I'm uh, I'm not alone here. It nope. uh, feels like I, I swear to God, I I think like everybody Loki still loves Kyle Pitts, and they just don't want to admit it. But um, well, he can't I think be good Brock, because he hasn't. He's not the best tight end right now, so there's no way he could be good. Even though when he had an actual quarterback in a system that would throw him the ball, he broke all the rookie records. And most people don't want to take L's. They just want to be like, oh, whatever the narrative is now. Right. Like, like yeah, people yeah. didn't want to take Dalton Kincaid in rookie drafts. And now you see him being like, I hope you took Dalton Kincaid. Like, hold on a second. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I just scored a touchdown. So, yeah. <laughs> this is an interesting question, though, because, like, you know, all of a sudden it's like, could we make an argument for Kincaid over Laporta? Is is that a little oh, premature? Yeah, I think so. Right? Is that a little premature? I mean, that's how everybody had it like yeah. two months ago or three months ago, rather. And now, you know, all of a sudden it's like Laporta's t- dynasty tight end two or three. Uh, I think Brock Bowers is definitely going to be in this conversation, though. I do believe he'll be a top five dynasty tight end. I, you know, that's probably the warmest take you'll ever hear. But <laughs> I, I, I believe that he's going to be in in that conversation this like probably week one of next year. Right. So how do you guys feel about this? I'll take I'll take Brock. I'm going, you know, I cool. like the Pitts comparison. I think, you know, Brock's, you know, even maybe even another step up from, yep. you know, even he's like the daddy unicorn and Pitts is like his offspring. Um, but, I, you know, Kincaid <laughs> Kincaid with the volume here that that it, he's been getting and his potential for for, you know, the foreseeable future. And we're usually talking premium if we're talking tight ends, that volume's going to be kind of that king so it does give me a little bit of pause because we don't know where bowers is going to end up but i'm, I'm going to take that the overall ability from from bowers to just be an absolute game wrecker um and, and kincaid's showing that it's no slight on kincaid at all i think bowers is just you know that fun and that good so I, i'm going to roll brock there you want yeah. you do one more let's do one more yeah let's do it okay I, I don't think we can do this without hitting a little jsn i know jsn hasn't come out and, and crushed but jsn and I know I wanted to throw this in there because, you know, I know you're a big Keon Coleman guy as well. Uh, so I wanted to pull at your heartstrings one last time before we get out of here. Um, JSN last five weeks had 16 points, 12 points, 12 points and nine points. So little little life coming into JSN here. Uh, Coleman coming in at 6'4", 215, big fella, um, obviously transfer from Michigan State. Uh, 12.8 ADOT, 10 touchdowns. That's, that's tied for uh, fifth. Only 69 targets and 42 receptions, 562 yards. I think it reflects how important and how big Keon's been in in spots and how dominant he's been at certain times throughout the season. Um, But JSN, I think the wrist injury coming into the season affected him quite a bit. And, you know, I I think I I was seeing some of the bigger guys kind of talk about him, Scott Barrett and some of the other guys, you know, if well, if he was going to be a superstar, we might have seen him flash already. That's bullshit. Like, you just you came in here. This is kind of what I expected from JSN. You have Tyler Lockett, who's fucking awesome year after year, and you have DK, who's ridiculous. Um, two and, strong running backs, and and two good running backs, and a team that kind of wants to have their identity pitted behind a little bit of a running back. Pitted. And Gene Geno Smith, who you know is is fine. You know, this is the best way I can. You know, he he's good enough. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to facilitate three guys and two running backs, you know, most weeks. I think you're starting to see some life out of JSN. I didn't like kind of the antics on the field in the last game. He was being a bit of a shithead, um, <laughs> you know, but shithead if you weren't sure. But, um, you know, he gets it from DK. So, you know, <laughs> what was he doing? He <laughs> just just a lot of like first downs and like Man. people's face it's just too much like it's everyone let's get let's let's be a little bit more of the guy first before you start now, doing that if you're down 25 points sure oh, for doing sure. that shit yeah. but i mean it, I, I, wouldn't even made this list but jsn i think has has this is what i expected so i'm i'm by no means am i out on jsn i think he's a really 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 talented player um you know obviously the the the, the wr1 from this last class i don't know that keon coleman is the wr1 in this class he's probably three or four uh, at this point and maybe somebody might even overtake him at some point or maybe he overtakes Rome or neighbors for some people so what do you think and I don't know where you stood on JSN coming into this so uh, yeah uh, so here are my thoughts Keon Coleman's probably my wide receiver three right now in this class I had JSN as my wide receiver one very boring um, I, I agreed with the consensus sure 
Um, you nailed it, uh, you know, regarding everything you said about Seattle. Geno Smith, you know, people, man, he, he's got to start stepping up. He's, he's got to be better. Um, and when we think about JSN's rookie campaign so far, I would say this is mostly what I expected. It was a little bit slower initially than I thought. But now that we're in week 10, about halfway through the year, roughly, we're kind of at where I thought we would be, right? Where yeah. we're seeing that gradual increase in snap percentage, in receptions, in targets, just just overall usage. Um, so I, I think, I think I, like I'm perfectly fine and I'm, I'm a believer in JSN. I didn't panic on him. People were panicking. People were selling. Like I, I was still like sure. diamond hands. I'm still in on JSN. I think I would actually prefer to roll the dice and take a chance mm. at Keon Coleman. It's really close. Um, I like a lot of what I've seen about out of JSN. Uh, this is this is again. This is a very good question. And if we look back a year from now, and I regret saying Keon Coleman, I'm not going to be surprised, right? Like this. This is a good, valid question. And and JSN was a nice pro- prospect. Obviously, what was he? 21st overall to Seattle, right? He had he had the best draft cap of the four receivers, and um, I think that speaks for itself because he was, you know, he was a very good player in college, at least for that one year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I, I kind of put these guys up together differently we, than A Chain and, and Rome. I thought I thought mm-hmm. they were kind of two different players uh, here. You got a big they bodied kind of just physical freak. Uh, but also moves very well. Keon Coleman, punt returner as well, just like Rome, uh, has had you know some some good punt returns, some for TDs. Just had just highlight reel of catches, uh, where you know JSN certainly a highlight reel, but in a different manner. Um, I think I want to stick with JSN, but Coleman certainly could go to a team and be that dominant number one right away that you don't have to wait for. It's just unfortunate where where JSN kind of went and landed. Um, I'm going to stick with JSN for now. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think Keon Coleman could be the right answer um, come come draft time because he, like I said, he he kind of is that alpha number one guy that that looks like the alpha number one. But JSN is kind of like I think more along the lines of where the league is right now as those yeah. guys who are those you know Stefan Diggs like just dominant target hogs can beat you a lot of different ways. Um, you know, so, uh, I'll, I'll stick with JSN there. You got anything uh, to wrap this up with Austin? No, man, I'm ready. W- what do we got next? I think that's it. I think we're going to wrap it up, uh, for the 23s versus 24s. We'll, we'll leave a little meat on the bone. You know, we, we, we want to, we want to come back to this. We'll probably use some of these same guys, but, uh, we didn't do flowers or Puka or Addison and, and, you know, we didn't get any of the running backs in there, and there's more quarterbacks to talk about. So uh, we'll see you in, in like a, a month or so with another one of these because uh, we're, we're, we're getting to that point where we're going to start diving into a little bit more 24. So we might have a little more, uh, you know, a little more action on the 24 guys who we like, who we don't like. I think we need to start talking about a little bit more of the running backs as well. Um, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, five-star review. Make sure you follow our guy, Austin, at Austin Abbott FF. That's two Bs and two Ts. Two Fs for your bitch ass. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you next time on this very fun program. <laughs> Peace. Go to patreon.com slash nasty. Thank you.